Alex is first up tonight. Right. After a wild party to celebrate our 2000th episode, I slept the night on the one show sofa. <laughs> Please do. Oh. When did the one show start? What year? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Khmer Rouge. Nothing existed before you turned up. Did anybody join you? Oh, hello. S and slept there? The, yeah, the sleeping oh, bit. Sue but, but Pollard, I no, can't tell you that. nothing like that. No, I was just wondering if they wanted to keep you company in case you yeah. forgot to wake up for the next edition. No, I said, <laughs> well, so I'll tell you what it is. I'm a bit out of practice. Oh. I was excellent at drinking before I had the children. Right. But mm. since the children, I'm not as good. Right. So actually, I'd fallen asleep at the end of the party. Everybody was still milling around. They just put a blanket over me and left me there. Paint a picture for us, Alex. Who else was there? I'm imagining it was a starry affair. No. No. Oh. Well, you can't invite one guest without all of them. Can you imagine how many people would have been there, Rob? Over ten. <laughs> <laughs> there have been 2,000 episodes, and there's how many guests per episode? Oh, well, three or four. Three or four? I mean, it varies. So that's like 8,000 guests, of whom 1,500 are Giles Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time did you wake up the following oh, day? Oh, early. 6.37. And, I mean, what went through your mind? Oh, beside myself. There was two of you there. They'd taken my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> people, don't they? They employ staff. What about your PR or somebody like that that would understand? PA. Yeah, PA. I, I don't know. I haven't got a personal person. Have you got a personal person? You will have. I mean, you're oh, a national yes, treasure. Oh, yes, I've got six, but they haven't lasted long. Do you get them? <laughs> Why? Yeah, I pay them too much. Uh, I, don't no, think, I don't think your PA <laughs> could ever be paid too much. Well... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, carry on. No, I just think <laughs> it's, it's just seems a bit unfair, Alex. Mm. What do you what do you think, Chris? Does this smack of the truth for you? I think there's a lot of truth in this. You're probably nodded off in the corner while Giles yeah. just continued with his stories. <laughs> It's always nice to have a little insight into yeah. these exclusive exactly. show business parties. And I'm mm. wondering about in the heyday of Heidi High. I bet there were a few shenanigans and parties then. Oh, yes. There were several wrong chalet entries. <laughs> <laughs> what a very delicate way of expressing it. <laughs> anyway, what do we think? Well, I don't... <laughs> Well, they, they, but I'm not being funny. This is really hard. Um, hmm. Are you looking at my cherry? No, I'm just thinking you're doing you it. Oh, it's cherry. a cherry story. I thought you were doing an impression of Isaac Newton. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, with the arrow. who has got the arrow. Have you got it hidden away? No, that was William Tell. Tell. <laughs> <laughs> Truth yeah. or a lie? Yeah, go on then. I'll what do you mean, go on then? <laughs> So Chris thinks oh, Chris. it's true. I, I think it's a true. A true. And Sue, yeah. you think it's. I'm going to say it's true. Okay. Well, my team think it's true. All right. They think it's true. Alex falling asleep on the one show sofa. True or a lie? Oh, Rob, I'm better than that. Come on. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> I once got the giggles on the one show when I accidentally destroyed a priceless historical artifact. Please do. What was the priceless historical artefact? It was a letter. Which letter? There's 26 to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> a written letter. Uh, so who was the letter to and from? <laughs> to um, some soldiers from King George. How did you destroy it? Mm. So um, I was going through a little phase. Ah, where... uh, was it that phase? <laughs> It was that phase, phase, but it wasn't that phase. Right. Um, it was a phase where I was drinking green tea. So I had a pint of green tea. A pint? A pint. Proper old-school Welsh. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is, it has to be in a pint. <laughs> where were you hiding it on the set? It was rehearsal. Yeah, but... So no you... need to hide. Whoa, 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 whoa. I've seen the one show and you rehearsed that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. So, basically, the pint of green tea spilt all over the letter and because, obviously, letters back in the day were written by, you know, 
quills and ink. <laughs> <laughs> the green tea fell on the letter and all the writing fell off. And fell off? The writing <laughs> fell off. Well, it slipped off. But it didn't it slip off. off. It didn't it? slip off. Well, it did. So what happened then? Um, so the, the people from the museum who'd mm. brought in the artefacts, the glove wearers, they start basically crying because They it's... cried? Yeah, because it's a priceless letter. They were getting angry, and the more angry they got, the funnier I thought it was. You laughed? <laughs> well, I've got that thing, you know, when things happen, I mean, I find it really funny. You know when you're not supposed to laugh? <laughs> I think there's a name for it. It's called yeah. something. Shh. Yes, insensitivity. <laughs> All right. What do we think? I think it's an out and out line. I don't think you'd laugh. And if letters fell off a page, I think you were just fantasising over Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, what about you? I'm going to say it's a lie. I, I think it's true, because mm. I think she screams incompetence. <laughs> I'll go with my team and say, say it's a lie. lie. OK, so, Alex, they've said it's a lie. Was it the truth or was it a lie? It's in fact... True. Yes, it's true. Alex did destroy a priceless historical artefact. This I... is Raymond, and when I went into labour, instead of rushing to the hospital, I rushed to his pet shop. Right. <laughs> Rav, how do you know Raymond? This is Raymond, and I cost him the £250,000 question on who wants to be a millionaire. David, what is your relationship with Raymond? Uh, this is Raymond, and he's the bird expert who taught me how to make friends with the crow who was bullying me. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Alex's pet shop pal, Rav's fed up friend, or David's crow consultant. No. Okay, let's start with Alex. Which child was this? Was your first child or? First one. I was having contractions and it was time to go to the hospital. I'd put it off, put it off, put it off. But as we were about to leave the house, I saw my hamsters. Right. And they didn't have any of the chewy sticks that they loved left. <laughs> and I know I'm going to hospital, potentially for a few days. Right. So I thought I'm going to have to stop by the pet shop, to get some new sticks. <laughs> well, you, you... you have a husband. Yeah. You know what the next question is. <laughs> Why he... didn't he go and have the baby Cut. and you go and get the sticks? <laughs> Where's hubby? Fixing some wardrobes. Oh, he's at home? Yeah. He didn't like the hamsters. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what? No, you could always take the hamsters to with hospital. You. Yes. <laughs> because it's oh yeah, good practical joke. <laughs> 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 yeah, because oh, I thought the father had big cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they could be classed as a support. Support. Yeah. Support pets. They, they could get very funny about rodents in hospitals. Yeah. <laughs> was that Charlie was. <laughs> Fixing wardrobes. Yeah. Priorities is a word that's coming to my mind. He's very strange, Rob. <laughs> He's not Welsh, is he? <laughs> no. Well, this is the mistake I mean... you've made, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> this is no. you've weakened the bloodline by going with one of these English. No. What do you I expect to happen? I looked and looked, Rob, and I couldn't find one, and then I settled, and this is where we are. <laughs> yeah, but Roland, actually... He Raymond. Seems, uh, Raymond. Raymond. Oh, I'm so sorry, Raymond. You seem nice. Are you married? <laughs> he's not allowed to speak. Oh, yeah, but he's got a lovely smile and he's dying to break out. <laughs> no, he could have taken the hamster's treats with him, you know, to your house for the hamsters. It's so not, you could it's have not driven... Deliveroo. I mean... <laughs> To talk over to a pet shop by two little sticks that are probably 30 p each again. I'd yeah. like them delivered. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who would you like to quiz next? Uh, Rav, so you were on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Raymond was on. I was the phone. Oh, friend. you were the phone of I friend. I was the phone of friend, yeah. Was it the celebrity version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? 
No, it was just a normal one. This is years ago. Years and years so this ago. was before your television days? Yeah, I'd never been on telly then. I was but also, I think even in the celebrity one, it's it's the people on the celebrity. Because it's not getting the best out of a celebrity, it's just having them on the phone. <laughs> Are you still friends, though? He forgave you, I imagine, for that one almighty upset. You could have changed his life forever. He'd, he'd be able to give up the pet <laughs> shop. And the books, yeah, yeah, yeah. And indulge his love <laughs> of birds. Yeah. yeah. How did he, uh, Rav, how, how did he react Fair when this happened? Not. So it's actually really awkward because I haven't actually seen him since then. Well, I thought you were friends. We were. And he fell out over this? Yeah. So, I've, I've sent a few texts and that was it. This is the closest we've, what, we've been. What was the question? It was, who is the first director to win two Best Director Academy Awards. And when they phoned me, it was a 50-50, so there was only two left. And who, were the, two. who were the options? Steven Spielberg and Oliver Stone. Imagine I'm phoning you, Lee, and they've yeah. asked me that question. Lee, it's Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, I'm on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Uh -huh. And I got to phone a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, David wasn't in, so <laughs> I... <I'm, laughs> I just, I just, it's, this is the question, mm -hmm. right? Who was the first director mm -hmm. to win two Best Director Academy Awards? Now, the choices are, and think about it, Lee, Oliver Stone or Steven Spielberg? Yeah, sorry, Rob, you said the choices are, it's actually the options are, you only have one choice, you have two options. <laughs> <laughs> What did you say the answer was? I said Steven Spielberg. Right. And I thought that was the correct answer. And he's not Spielberg. It's not. Give us an example of the kinds of messages you sent him afterwards to try and make, you know, men, men bridges. Well, I actually... First of all, I just said, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I nice thought start. it was right. Got yeah. two ticks and nothing more. <laughs> um, oh. we... uh, how long ago was this? 2001. 2001, you got two ticks? Two ticks. In 2001... <laughs> You got two, two ticks. BBM. What? Blackberry Messenger. Blackberry you used to get Messenger. Two ticks if the message was read. Nice save, there, right? <laughs> nice save. Yeah. We used to work together, and then. What was he? We... Was he a policeman? Yeah, we were at training together. Oh, Did he carry on being a policeman? Mm. Yeah, he went off to uniform. Does he look like a copper, Lee? Does he look like a copper? That's a good question. He stood like a copper. Yeah. He's got his hands behind his back, uh, and he's wearing a policeman's yeah. outfit. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Here's the question, Rav. What made him think that you're the man to go to for movies? So, we were at training school together for 18 weeks and we used to do pub quizzes together at the pub around the corner from training school and I was a bit of a movie buff. OK. So, was that Hendon, then? Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you remember the pub? Yeah. <laughs> He was a policeman. Yeah. That's, no, no, that's he definite. Was. No, I'm just talking about the pub so I can make sure that he remembers the name of the pub and that was that would coincide with the rest of his truth gotcha. or not. Rav, uh, my client wants to know <laughs> what was the name of the pub in Hendon? <laughs> the Cladder Ring. Oh, yeah, I've had that. Oh, the Cladder Ring. <laughs> um, All right, now then, what about David? Uh, okay. David and the Crow. Right. What was the crow doing to you that you would say constituted bullying? Well, uh, it was flying at me. <laughs> right. And was on... your wife still covering your face in seeds? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no bird food had been applied to me by my wife. I was just Please going... just use that in the trailer. Yeah, I was going... <laughs> I would leave the house and and it would and it would fly towards me and on a couple of times it sort of slightly hit me in the head. Do you think it was trying to attack you? Yes. Why? Wow. Why you? Because it hated me. <laughs> How often did the crow attack you? Most days when I left the house, it would attack me. So we were talking oh. over what period? Over a period of about a, a week to ten days. How does Raymond come into the story? Well, he's the crow. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, he is from the RSPB. He came round to see what was going on. And, did, he, did he witness it? Uh, yes, he saw he, that... Yeah, he, he waited yeah, for you And the to... thing he's told me is that crows are very intelligent birds right. and they recognise people. 
Oh, you see, they watch telly, do they? Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, yeah, turned out the crow hated Peep Show, so... <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you, you've probably done something to sort of threaten or upset it without realising it. Had you? Well, the only thing we could think of... <laughs> when you tried to shoot that crow. ..is that he, he said <laughs> that the crow was nesting in the sort of eaves of the house yeah. and as a sort of creepery thing, getting in the way of a window, and I hacked it back no. a bit. Ooh. And he said, well, maybe it was that. And oh. this has enraged the crow, and so he's going to go for you until he's driven you out of the house. So what did you do, then? We moved house. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what, because you said it happened over a week to ten yeah, days. Yeah, what he said is what you need to do is curry favour with the crow, ah. putting out little treats for it, and it worked. What, what was treats, treats did you give to the, uh, to the Nuts. crow? Nuts. Nuts. Uh, but the crow's going to see you doing it. Ah. Otherwise, the crow just thinks they've cleverly found their own nuts. I hope this is true, cos that's an image, isn't it? If you go, now, yeah. I've got you yeah. some nuts! Look! Yeah. Yeah. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> nuts. All right, we need an answer. So, Lee's team, is Raymond Alex's pet shop pal, Rav's fed-up friend or David's crow consultant? I mean, why wouldn't a crow want to attack him? <laughs> you can just imagine leaving in the house, can't you? Goodbye, goodbye. Hello, everybody. Hello, world. Hello, trees. Hello, world. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Crow. I'm not a children's <laughs> character. <laughs> but you know what? If if it's Rav, why on earth would you invite him in a roundabout way to a show that you happen to be on? Because after he lost a quarter of a million pounds, yeah. he'll do anything for fifty quid in a free hotel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rav is, uh, you've just gone... What does body, that mean? Body language. Oh, do you know about body language? Yeah. What does that mean? The liars go like that, or they sometimes go like that. Do they? Yeah. That's a bit of a get <laughs> <tell>, isn't it? Have you ever like that? What do people who are telling the truth do, Sue? Mm. Uh, they just look it in the eye steadfastly. Yeah. Right? And really... <laughs> look at that, you see. Yeah. And really engaged, yeah. or, or like David's doing, yeah. they go... And occasionally they will drop their trousers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll Unfortunately, don't... as you know, I'm nude from the waist down. <laughs> no wonder the oh. crow king's attacking yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The early bird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, Lee, time to go for a guess. I, I think it's feasible that it is David. You're going for David. <laughs> Chris, you're going for... R Raymond. No, it was... Rav. <laughs> 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 that was not to speak. <laughs> what are you saying, Lee? I think it's Rav. So you're saying it's Rav. Uh, Raymond, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Raymond, and Alex came in my pet shop while she was in my <laughs> Yes, Raymond is Alex's pet shop pal. Thank you very much, Raymond. Oh, thank you, Raymond. Thank you. On a recent trip to the zoo, my bag was hijacked by a one-armed monkey. Lee! <laughs> what zoo was it? London Zoo. And which arm was it? The left was missing, right intact. As you look at it, or from the monkey's perspective? <laughs> His left was missing. OK. And why was hmm. it missing, Al? I don't really know. I mean, we, we were merely visitors in the zoo, Stace. I didn't <laughs> know the backstory of the monkey. No, I accept. <laughs> who, who is we? Me and my husband and our little boy. Your little boy. So you've gone for a little family day at the zoo? Yeah. And aren't monkeys usually be behind cages or behind glass? Well, they are, apart from when you get to the rainforest section. Uh, and in the rainforest section, there are birds, there are monkeys, there are sloths. It's a free-for-all. <laughs> <laughs> Did the monkey have a name? Cos often they name them, don't they? The monkey's... Um, the monkey's name was... Bandit. Bandit? As in one arm. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> What sort of monkey? It yeah. wasn't a chimp, was well, it? I'm not David Attenborough, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I... Excuse me, a chimpanzee, even though it looks like a monkey, isn't a monkey. Well yeah. spotted, I yeah. deliberately yeah. said that. 
<laughs> Even though a chimp is totally, in every meaningful way, obviously it's a monkey, it's not a monkey. You know, it's a special place that's been made I by know. biologists for pedants to reside, so that whenever <laughs> anyone refers to a chimpanzee as a monkey like you did, then a pedant <laughs> like me says, oh, no, a chimpanzee isn't a monkey, and I've started to hate myself for that. <laughs> Nice of you to join the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I'm pushing the pram. Said monkey travelled from a tree and landed on the pram. Yeah. My maternal instinct obviously kicks in, so I take Ted... You cuddled the monkey. <laughs> I, <said> the monkey. <laughs> I took Ted onto the pram and then the monkey got hold of the bag attached to the pram. In he went. Spreading monkey DNA over all of the contents. What? <laughs> How big is the monkey? What, that big? A bit smaller. Are you sure it wasn't a squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it like this? I think you'll find, Rob. I think you'll find, Rob, it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> You've not been listening, have you? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. What do you think, Lee? Does it ring true? There is not a there is not a single element to that story that sounds believable. <laughs> <laughs> You're the boss, but I think it's a massive lie. Got to be a lie, then. You're saying it's a lie. Got to be a lie. Okay, Alex, was it the truth or was it a lie? It is, in fact, true. Oh, my lord! <laughs> yes, it's true. Alex's bag was hijacked by a one-armed monkey. And look, we have a picture. That <laughs> is the monkey in the bag <laughs> at the time. That's terrifying. I can tell if someone is a good dancer just by the way they smile. David's team. Alex, look at me. <laughs> Turn what, your what? head a little bit. <laughs> and now this way. Now do it while she's dancing. Yeah. <laughs> no. Why? Yeah, well, it's why? true then. <laughs> why? But why? What is it about, though? Yeah. Because people who are good oh, at dancing... you stop doing that? I find it a bit disturbing, David. <laughs> it's just a bit light entertainment for you, David. Really? <laughs> What, what is it? Yeah, what it's about? Yeah, people, what do you look for? Well, pe people who are good at dancing will look naturally smug. What? Smug? What, what are you saying? <laughs> now, you're putting on a smug face. No, he's not. <laughs> and people who are good at dancing have shorter teeth than you. <laughs> it's just something about dancers. They seem to be a little bit underdeveloped in the tough area. Are they making up? for their short teeth with, by, by learning to dance. I don't know, but it seems to be a pattern. They That's what I found doing extensive research. So I'll go round you all now. Open up. <laughs> you could be all right. Oh, that's... That's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Snug, short tooth no. person. <laughs> Not mine. Go on. <laughs> Rob? Rob, he's got quite long teeth. No. <laughs> the thing is... Rob, look. you get up there and prove her wrong. I just want to say, Rob, I've got a lot of respect for your commitment to the show. Yeah. I mean, I'm no Bruno or Len. I'm no Bruno or Len. <laughs> Hasn't she got a Hang stupid on, you're voice? you're taking them. <laughs> what is... Does anyone know how large Fred Astaire's teeth are? Small. Small. Didn't have any, Small. just gums. <laughs> yeah, he had little, tiny little... No, no, no. Tiny. Just tiny. Work it on the top, hack. Duck it up, I like pie. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> So, what are you going to say, David? Uh, Mel, do you think it's true? I, I think it's the sort of claim that Ms Jones would make. It's not I scientifically forgot. proven. Well, it you is. don't say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think it's it, it is the sort of thing she. She's, she's claimed it. She's not saying it is. No. Yeah. Do you think it's the truth? <laughs> the truth. The truth. I, yeah, I think we think it's true. Do you think it's true? true? Yes. Alex Jones, was it the truth or were you telling a lie? Don't be so ridiculous. It's a lie! Oh. 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 Yes, it was a lie. Uh, Alex can't tell if someone is a good dancer by the way they smile. Um, the first time I used eBay, I accidentally bought a canoe instead of a handbag. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> well, how did that error occur? Well, back in the day, mm -hmm. when eBay was pretty new, uh, I thought I'd have a little go. Mm -hmm. And I quite like vintagey stuff and old clothes, although when they delivered, it's not quite as good, cos they always smell a bit musty and have an air of dead people. But I like the idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, and... Did you get that from eBay? <laughs> <laughs> Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Um, so I was scrolling through, as you do, <laughs> and saw um, a lovely clutch bag. Mm. I know I've lost you all already, yeah. haven't I? A clutch, a clutch bag. Bag. A clutch bag is a, is a little bag. For that keeping you the clutch. pedal from a car in. <laughs> 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 you have an accelerator bag and a brake bag. <laughs> So what are we saying, Alex? You you saw a clutch bag, you were miming putting the clutch bag under your arm to get into it, and then you pressed canoe by accident. Yeah. <laughs> they, in fact, in the modern computers, they've taken the canoe button off the keyboard. Because <laughs> this kept happening. OK, you're looking at eBay. What I'm scrolling next? through. Right. It started off at 99p. 99 pence, John. Mm. Are you in? For a, 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 for a vintage bag? Yeah. You're in. Anyway, <laughs> next thing you know, fourteen pound. Ah. I'm thinking about pulling out because yeah. that's quite a lot for a vintage <laughs> bag. <laughs> but anyway, on it went. Yeah, thirty-two pound. Right. You're still bidding. You still yeah. in, John? Uh, no, I wasn't even in when it was ninety-nine. <laughs> <laughs> you were wrong about that. Um, <laughs> you, you read me wrong there. <laughs> I don't know what my body language oh, is selling me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the price is going up. You're uh, tracking, that's what they call it. £32. You're tracking the bag. And I think it's a good time to go to bed. Yeah. Leave it. Next morning. Yeah. <laughs> email on the laptop. Congratulations, your bid was successful. You have bought a second-hand red canoe. <laughs> It's quite a jump, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think that's a terrible story? There's some fella... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ..whose boat was going down. He says, don't worry, I've got this covered. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to squeeze a family of five into a vintage jambo. <laughs> so you emailed the canoe man saying, yeah. instead of the canoe, could I have the, the clutch, clutch handbag that looks like And a... he said, I haven't got a clutch handbag to offer. Yeah. And I said, well, you've lied, because I bid on a clutch handbag. Oh, so do you think he was luring people in <laughs> by putting photographs of vintage handbags, which people then bid on and bid on and bid on, whatever they pay, whatever the handbag looks like, they only get a canoe? Can <laughs> Maybe seven times out of ten, people make do with the canoe. It was... <laughs> Seen at the opening night of a film, a glamorous starlet turning up with. <laughs> the commentators are saying it's an incredibly large clutch bag. <laughs> okay, what are you thinking, David? I, th I think I don't know. What do you think? I just too much of a gap. Do you think it's true? No, I think it's a lie. Oh, I think it's a lie. We well. think it's a lie. You all think it's we a think lie. It's a lie. Yeah. Conclusively a lie. Yeah. Conclusively yeah. A lie. Okay, Alex, truth or lie? Silly boys, it was in fact. Oh. Well, wow. yes, it's true. Alex did accidentally buy a canoe instead of a handbag on eBay. Oh, Here we go. I once lost Julian Lloyd Webber's cello because I was chatting up a parking attendant. <laughs> well, David and team. A lot of factors there. Lot of factors. Why were you in possession of Julian Lloyd Webber's cello? Because he had lent it to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why would he lend you his cello? Well, not exactly lend. You I was it. kind of, I was kind of looking after it. 
Where were you, Alex? I was in Manchester. Right. Yeah. And was he playing? Was he doing a gig or something? He was doing, yeah, he was like with an orchestra, but he had, an own, he had his own solo part, so he played... Not that I know, bit. an orchestra, they all have, they have an instrument each, don't they? <laughs> yeah, but David, he had a special part. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. But he, for which he didn't need his cello, it was... Uh, <laughs> he, he asked you to hold the cello... This is before. ..and go and check on the parking scenario <laughs> in the middle of the symphony. This was before. Before the concert. OK. Mm. So did you know him? I hadn't met him before, no. But what was the great attraction of the parking attendant? Very handsome, very fit. It was very How hot. How did you tell him a big hat like that and his jacket up He there? didn't How have did a hat tell? on. They were, they were very modern parking attendants. Well, he didn't have a hat on. <laughs> I think we need to analyse this story chronologically. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, it is the day of the concert. Right. Yes. <laughs> Dawn nice. breaks. Right. Where are you and where is Julian Lloyd Webber? <laughs> Julian Lloyd Webber and I are both in Manchester. When did you meet? In the car park. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sound like, like a true Welsh girl. No, the, the car park. <laughs> I'm afraid the car park is not an acceptable answer to the question, right. when did you meet? Right. Because the car park is a place, not a time. <laughs> Let me set the scene. OK. So, I'm in the car park. <laughs> with the car park attendant. Of course right. you are. But yep. The okay. car park attendant is just there. He hasn't got a hat on, he's not that official. <laughs> he's just generally hanging around the car park, all sexy. He's just hanging out. Yeah. What's he wearing at the time? Has he got anything on? Is he, is he naked? <laughs> T-shirt. Jeans and a T-shirt? An this is just jacket. some guy. Some bloke. <laughs> he's told you he's on. a car park attendant because no. he wants to sound important. Yeah. <laughs> is that important? Yeah, it's the sexiest <laughs> thing you can say. Everyone knows that. Julian Lloyd Webber yeah. walks in with walks his cello. With his right. cello. Which weighs about four tonnes? No, they're not that heavy. Well, no. No, no, no. They're no. not that heavy. No, and for no. someone like Julian, who's probably got a bit of sinew and bicep because of all his playing, mm. it would be very light. <laughs> yeah. It's that's not, it's not that's how they heavy. pick cellists, isn't it? They yes. pick the ones that can carry it. They can, <laughs> you, can, you can teach anyone to play it, but it's the carrying it that's exactly. the trick. Exactly. <laughs> he pitches up. He's on his phone. Yeah. Oh, He's while carrying the cello. the cello. Yeah. What a guy. <laughs> Were you trying to get off with the car park man because you wanted to not pay for your own parking? It's difficult to know if you're a car park attendant whether any relationship you're in is genuine. <laughs> whether oh, is exactly. it me or is it just for is the it, free parking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did he just hand the cello to you with a yes. nod like that while he was... On the understanding no, that you would know what he meant. No, he'd put it down on his side and then just went... <laughs> what happens then? Yes, this is crucial. Then Julian comes off the phone, taps me on the shoulder, where's my cello? I look round, cello gone. <gasps> oh! Uh, what? No! It was the car parking attendant. <laughs> Who took the cello then? The cello yeah? had made its way... Into the concert hall. Of course, on its own. On its own. Oh, on its own. <laughs> the very best cellos can do that. <laughs> well, somebody has taken the cello, gone into the concert hall with the cello. Julian and me flummoxed. Flummoxed. So, so this is not an attempt to steal the cello. This is a do-gooder seeing an unattended cello and thinking, "Well, I can't leave that lying around. Someone could steal it. I'd better steal it." <laughs> It's a good citizen, so that's worth millions. It's on its own, I'll take it in. Why were you at this concert? What was your ostensible role? I was a runner researcher. So I was working on a television programme that they were making. That's new information. You didn't say that. I'm suddenly yeah. coming round to I Julian's know. point of view. So what do you think, David? What are you going to say? It's utter, utter nonsense. You think it's nonsense? I'm going to say she's lying. Do you both think I'm going she's, to say she's lying? She's lying, yeah. She's lying in well, the I heart. certainly. I, see, I think it's true. Do you? But not enough to overrule. I, I haven't. <laughs> oh, don't say that, because now you. Well, no, I, it's a very rarely that I overrule. <laughs> At the <laughs> moment, I believe in democracy. Yeah. But if, we, if it turns out you guys are wrong, I may lose my belief in democracy and <laughs> this could become a police state. <laughs> So your answer is? We're going to say it's a lie. Saying it's a lie. <sighs> right. Alex Actually, Jones. no, we're going to say it's true. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry, police state okay, time, we're going to say it's overall. true. I like that. Yeah. I, I like that. 
I find that arousing. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> truth or lie? Rob, you should have to take their first answer on this programme. It's true. No. <laughs> yes. It's true. Uh, Alex did lose Julian Lloyd Webber's cello because she was chatting up a parking attendant.